So between the two major sims, Assetto Corsa Competizione and iRacing, there's traditionally one major technique that makes it difficult to swap between the two. And that's braking. There's a few things you need to know about each sim and how to get on the middle pedal and how to be last on the brakes in every braking zone. So let's break down the differences between the two and work out how to be fast in both. So something I hear very often on stream and on social media and stuff like that are people who start on ACC or start on iRacing, learn to break on their game and then swap over to the other one and find it quite difficult. Often it's people starting with a game like ACC and getting used to the feel of the ABS in GT3 cars and then moving over to iRacing and struggling to get any feel in the brakes. So there's a few reasons why this is, and it's mostly due to how games simulate their car's braking physics, and also what electronic aids are available for each car. Does it use ABS, and how effective is the ABS? So with these two sims, there's really two main schools of thought on braking at the moment. You have sims where you can brake at 100% brake down the braking zone, and you have sims where you can't use 100% brake. The best two examples of this are ACC and iRacing. Both are very different ways to brake and they're both at polar opposites of this spectrum. I actually wanted to get an idea of what braking people like in these sims the most. So I chucked a poll on Twitter and I asked which sim is the best feel in the brakes and why and I had a bit of an interesting response. ACC ended up winning on 46.1% and iRacing came second with 41.8% but it was surprisingly close. There are a couple of really good points brought up. Some people loved ACC, some people loved GT7. Riley actually loved The Sims which is a very valid choice and Doug here didn't like any of The Sims. <laughs> I also had a vote for AMS 2, which quickly devolved into a debate about whether it's a dead game or not. It started out of nowhere and it got extremely heated and it was classic sim racing on Twitter. Anyway, let's get into ACC and why it's often a struggle to swap between ACC and iRacing. And to work that out, we need to go a little bit deeper into how the braking on Kunos's sim works and the techniques you need to use to go fast in it. When playing ACC, 95% of the time you'll be in a modern GT3 car with hectic good ABS. There are cars that don't have ABS, but they're really not used anywhere near as much as the GT3 and GT4 cars. So when you brake in ACC, you want to go straight to 100% brake at the braking marker and then trail the brake off when you want the car to start turning in. The ABS is so effective in ACC, you basically don't need to modulate at the initial brake hit. You only need to hit it hard, then focus on the trail brake. I found that getting fast in ACC, it's all about how you release the brake, at what time, how much steering angle you have on and how aggressive you get off the pedal. Generally, if you trigger the ABS, the car is going to want to go straight and understeer. But if you're on the brakes without triggering the ABS, you'll get the nose to point into the corner really nicely on the trail brake. And that's pretty much the trick to ACC. The difficulty isn't in the initial hit of the brake. The difficulty is how you get off the brake, managing the weight transfer of the car and, and doing it really smoothly, trying not to upset the balance or trigger the ABS and all about how much brake you, you kind of come off with in the trail brake. A lot of people love this technique and it's super satisfying to get it right. And it's also really accessible. In my opinion, any set of pedals can do really well at this technique, even potentiometer pedals like a Logitech G29 or a simple Thrustmaster pedal set can do this really well. You don't need to worry about the muscle memory of the initial hit as much. You can just go foot to the floor and worry about the trail brake later, which I personally find just as easy on a potentiometer set of pedals than on a load cell. ACC isn't the only game to use this technique. I've also noticed it in Race Room and also in Gran Turismo 7, which is another game where it's all about how you get off the brake and, and use the trail brake on the way to the apex. So on the other side of the coin, we have iRacing, a sim where the initial hit of the brake is really, really important. In iRacing, some of the time you'll be driving GTs, but a lot of the time you'll be driving other cars like open wheelers, V8 supercars, stock cars, and more. The majority of cars on iRacing don't actually have ABS. So at some point, you're gonna have to learn how to brake without locking up all your wheels. In iRacing, this normally looks like 
breaking at about 80% for a big braking zone, but this can differ. Some cars only want 50% and some you can smash the pedal all the way to 100% for a second or so in a braking zone. There's also the GT cars with ABS and in iRacing, this looks a little bit different to ACC. In iRacing, you're normally aiming for about 80% brake, even if you have ABS. If you brake too hard, you'll trigger the ABS and go long and miss the apex. The ABS in iRacing isn't too effective and activating it will make your braking much less effective as well. If you're new to iRacing and maybe transferring over to another sim, the hardest technique is learning how to hit the pedal with the right initial force and then trail it off as you get towards the corner as well. One thing I see some people do in iRacing is actually program their brakes so that when you go foot to the floor, it maxes out at 80% in-game rather than 100%. Some people do this and they're quite fast and some people find it a lot easier to drive on, but personally, I don't recommend it. And there are some times you can actually get to 100% brake in iRacing. And if you're not using that, you're wasting lap time. Um, I think it's a really good technique to learn how to get the right initial hit of a brake. So if you're learning iRacing, I think doing it on the vanilla settings is probably the best way to go. So the iRacing technique is often a fair bit harder than ACC at times, but is it more realistic? Uh, well, it depends. <laughs> ACC is supposedly modeled off modern day ABS systems from the current day GT3 cars that are super smart and highly efficient. And the iRacing ABS system is just really not as good, to be honest. Everyone has very different opinions on the braking though, and some people get very angry about it. Even when it comes to real life drivers, they can't really agree on it. We see some GT drivers saying ACC is perfect, and some saying that iRacing is great and they couldn't drive anything else. The main thing here is that both are fun to drive and both create really good racing, but it does take time to learn both techniques, and you shouldn't be too hard on yourself when you're learning different stuff and swapping between sims. I personally started on iRacing and swapping over to ACC was actually really difficult. It took ages for me to figure out how to go faster in the game and even then I'm not very fast at it. Give yourself time to learn different braking techniques and I guarantee you, you'll go faster and faster as you get more experienced. If you're actually looking for more information on how to get on the brakes in ACC the correct way, there is a video from Jadio last year on this channel that goes into a bit more detail on the trail brake and the techniques required. I recommend you check it out. It's super informative. Jadio is amazing at ACC, so definitely give it a watch. What sim racing driving technique should we look at next? Feel free to let us know in the comments. And for more racing and sim racing content, remember to subscribe to Overtake, like the video, um, all of that stuff. <laughs> anyway, um, thanks for watching and I'll see you next time. Bye.